So over the past few months, Elon Musk has turned Twitter into a smoking crater. He changed the name of the site to a letter of the alphabet. He's removing basic features like link previews and the block button, you know, the only feature that makes the site usable in the first place. He's testing out a new policy that will require you to pay to use Twitter. And the entire platform has become such a cesspool of anti-Semitism that Elon announced he's going to sue the Anti-Defamation League. Like, does he think that makes him seem less anti-Semitic? I don't know. The point is, it has gotten so bad on Twitter that many users have announced they're leaving forever. But you know what's weird? For the most part, we haven't. Twitter has lost an astonishing 90% of its value since Elon bought it, but somehow it's only lost around 5% of its users. Despite Elon's best efforts to trash the site, Twitter did not become the next Tumblr. A haunted city of geriatric millennials still posting about old CW shows. No, instead, we're all still refreshing an app we hate, over and over again while it circles the toilet we're checking it on. So why are we all still trapped in Elon's social media saw dungeon? Well, in this video, I'll tell you the surprising reason we still all need Twitter and how once we understand that, we can use that knowledge to build a better internet for all of us. But before we get into it, I wanna thank everybody who supports this channel on a website not controlled by a delusional self-sabotaging billionaire, Patreon. Your donations make these videos possible and allow me to pay my crew. Like my producer, Tony, who's trying to save up for a blue check mark so he can always be at the top of Ariana Grande's replies. So if you wanna chip in, head to patreon.com slash Adam Conover. I also wanna thank our data partner, usafacts.org for making this video possible. If you want the real facts about America, head to usafacts.org. And finally, I just wanna remind you that I am a touring stand-up comedian, so if you wanna see me in a city near you, head to adamconover.net for tickets and tour dates. So just because I'm arguing we need Twitter, that doesn't mean I'm an Elon fan. I mean, a few months ago, I made an entire video about why his purchase of Twitter proved that Elon is dumb as shit. But you know what? My comment section was filled with musk munchers singing Elon's praises, saying that he's a misunderstood genius who takes big risks and always comes out on top. Well, you know what? I have to hand it to Elon. He actually impressed me. He proved the naysayers wrong by doing something even dumber. In the worst rebranding blunder since New Coke, he changed the name of Twitter to X. Twitter was one of the most recognizable brands in the world, up there with Apple, Mickey Mouse, and Mario. The word tweet is literally part of popular culture. So marketing analysts believe that by throwing all that in the trash and replacing it with, you know, a letter of the alphabet, Musk destroyed $20 billion in brand value. What possible justification could there be for dousing $20 billion of your own money in gasoline and lighting a match? Well, Elon's a genius, so he's gotta have one, right? Yeah, turns out he does. It's that he likes the letter X. That's it. Dude literally just thinks it's a cool letter. Maybe he likes the spiky bits and thinks it looks like a ninja star. I don't fucking know, but that's the reason. Musk has been obsessed with the letter X since at least 1999, when he spent $18 million to buy the domain name X.com so he could use it for his new financial transaction service. Maybe Elon thought the X would make people think of a treasure map. Uh, just one problem. What it actually makes people think of is porn. And when Elon's business partners told him that, he just couldn't let it go. Elon is obsessed with X. He thinks about X all day. He wants to have X on everything he owns. So when he wouldn't see reason, the board of the company kicked him out as CEO and renamed the company PayPal, which could be about porn too, depending on what kind of pal we're talking about. But today, over 20 years later, Elon still can't get enough X. So he ditched the iconic Twitter bird and replaced it with this. And let's be clear, that's not even a logo. It's just one of the default math symbols that comes with every computer's font library. Dude literally changed one of the most valuable brands in the world to a wing ding. I mean, we're not even supposed to call them tweets anymore. Elon says that now they're called X's. So now you get to say, hey, did you see the X I X'd on X? I got re-X'd by exhibit. You know how I can tell this rebrand was a failure? Because no one is doing this. Everyone still just calls it Twitter. The only people who call it X at all are reporters whose editors force them to write X 
formerly known as Twitter. Elon turned the world's fifth most popular website into the artist formerly known as Prince. And if you're wondering why he would act so erratically, well, also like Prince, he is on a shitload of drugs. According to reporting from The New Yorker, Elon is a heavy and frequent ketamine user, which experts say can make you feel detached from your body, grandiose, and like you have special powers or talents. Now look, I don't judge, I love a good drug. Who doesn't enjoy feeling like you have special powers? When I eat an edible, I gain the power to polish off an entire five pints of Jennies. But when I have a big idea while I'm blazed out of my gourd, I don't do it. I write it down in my high notebook so I can have fun the next day figuring out what internet made of hexagons means. But when the ketamine goblins come and give Elon suggestions from their dark master, he actually does that shit. Like just last month, Elon removed the titles from every news article. So now when your friend posts a link with crazy if true, Twitter doesn't tell you what the article's about, you just see a picture of Joe Biden. Which, I mean, yeah, it would be crazy if Joe Biden were true, but it kind of makes it hard to use the site to follow the news. Like, yo dude, you see the news about climate change? Turns out smokestacks are happening. Twitter is just straight up worse to use than it was two years ago, and it already sucked then, so the bar was low. As a result, there's a huge demand for an alternative platform, a new Twitter. A promised land where the posts run free as water and they're never beating your ass in the QTs. There's just one problem. None of the new platforms give us Twitter addicts the fix we crave. The most promising is Mastodon. It's an open source, nonprofit project designed around small, independently run servers that all talk to each other. It's basically the Linux of social media. And just like Linux, no regular person will ever use it. Oh, there's a wonderful community of DIY tech enthusiasts happily tooting away on there right now, but for a social media site to be the new Twitter, it has to be usable by everyone from Justin Bieber to your Aunt Linda. And you know those two are never gonna figure out how to choose an instance. They can't even turn on the Apple TV without help. Then there's Blue Sky, founded by Jack Dorsey, the same guy who founded Twitter, so fool me fucking once. Fun fact, since getting kicked out of running the bird site, this dork turned hippies hobby has been going on masochistic meditation retreats. Dude spent his birthday in Myanmar trying to find enlightenment by getting bitten by 117 mosquitoes. And you know what? The fact that he's so comfortable with blood sucking pests might explain why on Blue Sky, you literally have to turn on a toggle if you don't wanna see Nazis. Problem is, once the Nazis are gone, you might have no one to talk to. My three friends with Blue Sky accounts are so desperate for anyone to hang out with, they hand out invite codes like a Scientologist begging you to take a personality test. The truth is, it's almost impossible to get enough people to move to one of these platforms at once for them to replicate what Twitter had. At least it was, until Mark Zuckerberg's threads. See, Zucks built a career on ripping off other people's ideas. So when he saw that Twitter was on the ropes, the boy king ordered his servants to build him his very own Twitter clone, post haste. A month or two later, Zuck launched Threads, a half-assed platform with exactly one killer feature. Your new Threads account imported all your followers from Instagram. Holy shit, your friends are here. As a result, Threads signed up over 100 million users in less than five days. Elon considered this such a threat to Twitter that he actually challenged Mark Zuckerberg to an MMA fight. But sorry to anyone who was excited to see Elon get punched in the face. A few weeks later, he backed out. Ooh, I'm sorry, Elon, but you a little baby bitch. This was so cowardly. Even Elon's fanboys were embarrassed. I mean, come on, dude. You can't make a big commitment, then just back out. This isn't, I don't know, buying Twitter. So for a moment there, it looked as though Threads might actually be the Twitter replacement everyone was waiting for, until a week later when everyone left. Threads is so boring, the number of active users has dropped by 82%. See, on its best days, Twitter felt like being in the middle of a bustling city, full of people of different backgrounds all chatting together. But because Threads is built on Instagram, its algorithm is designed to make advertisers happy, not people. Logging into threads is more like going to a suburban mall where you get to listen to Cinnabon say things like, I am a cinnamon roll, which is, you know, momentarily horrifying, but then just super dull. Seriously, log into threads now and all you'll see are random people commenting about how no one's on threads and a conversation between Wendy's and Jack in the Box where they pretend to have sexual tension. So with no better options, you can guess what we all did. We went crawling back to our ex. See, as fucked up as it is, 
Twitter still provides something that no other social network does. It's flat, it's open, it's totally searchable, and most importantly, it's the one place on the internet where literally everyone hangs out. It's like a party that the whole town is at. Sure, the booze ran out years ago, there's a rat in the floorboards and some weird guy out front is trying to charge you eight bucks to get in, but what are you supposed to do? This is where the party is. These qualities made Twitter an essential tool, not just to talk to your friends in your little silos like on Facebook, but to broadcast a public persona to the world and to give everyone a way to interact with that persona. Before Elon wrecked it, they even had a system to verify that you are who you say you are. Oh, so official. So for millions of people, their de facto homepage on the internet was Twitter. A place where anyone from a high school student to a presidential candidate could post a quick authoritative update that anyone could read knowing for certain it was from them. And that's important. I mean, according to USA Facts, more than half of Americans turn to social media at least once a day for information about the government. But when a hurricane's on the way, you don't go to Facebook unless you want to be told vaccines caused the storm. No, you go to Twitter to get it direct from the National Hurricane Center. So like it or not, and I definitely do not, Twitter has become a public good that millions of people rely on. And that means we can't just quit it any more than we can quit roads or electricity. We need it and we're stuck with it. And for that reason, it's kind of bad that a single drug addled billionaire has control over it. And you know what? I think Elon knows that. That's why he bought Twitter. He didn't buy a website. He bought us because he knows we can't leave. See, buried among all of Elon's stupidity, there actually is one nefariously brilliant business idea. Elon likes to monopolize public goods so that he can control them. The U.S. government now relies on him to transport astronauts into space. His network of proprietary car chargers is so huge, Biden had to change national electric car policy to fit Elon's preferred charging station. And his Starlink satellites have become such an essential part of the war in Ukraine, U.S. military leaders have had to kiss his ass to stop him from turning them off in the middle of a battle. And now, Elon's dumbass changes to Twitter, one of the most vital communication platforms of the modern age, have caused dangerous misinformation and fake videos to ping pong around the internet right in the middle of the Israel-Hamas war. Musk is a dictator of one, and his whims, peccadilloes, and ketamine demons now affect all of us. And you know what? This should go without saying, but I guess it doesn't. Our society should not function like this. When something is essential to the public, we, the public, need to have at least some level of control over it. You know, we decide democratically how to run our roads and our water supply, and we decide who wins America's Got Talent, not Simon Cowell. Anything less is un-American. So we need to use public power to protect public goods. And you know what? We've done it before. When radio and television came along, they quickly dominated American life. They shaped our politics, influenced our opinions, and sold us carton after carton of sweet, sweet cigarettes. The public quickly realized that these new forms of media were so powerful that they needed some amount of public oversight. A few little tweaks to make sure they served the public interest. So we passed laws to make sure that one billionaire couldn't own every TV station in town, so no one person could control the flow of information. We required that every broadcast network spend at least part of their day on public interest programming, which led to the rise of network news divisions and educational kids TV on Saturday mornings. That's right, you have the U.S. government to thank for Bill Nye and Dickman's world. And we funded public interest alternatives to corporate media, like NPR and PBS. And, you know, those didn't replace the dancing cigarette variety hour. But if you wanted trusted information and quality programming that wasn't designed to hurt and kill you, it was available. And today, even though CNN and Fox News have become sensationalist propaganda machines that sell psychopath pillows and mesothelioma brochures, NPR and PBS are rated as some of the most trusted news sources in America. Hell, All Things Considered is the third most popular radio show in the country. And yeah, it's boring, but that's a good thing. My grandma watched the PBS NewsHour every night until she died. And you know what? Maybe that's why she didn't go QAnon. Judy Woodruff is a national treasure, okay? And it's gonna sound kind of crazy, but as the technologist Ethan Zuckerman has compellingly argued, we could use these same ideas, that same public power, 
to build a new form of social media that works for everyone. Like, imagine, just for a second, what if instead of letting one dude with a 10-year-old's haircut buy up or rip off every social media site, we broke up big tech so that Facebook, Instagram, and Threads all had to compete with one another? What if the next time a dumbass billionaire tries to buy an essential chunk of the internet, a senator or two asked him a fucking question about it? And what if, instead of relying on the free work of good-hearted volunteers to build an alternative to the bird site, we invested public resources in that effort, scaled it up, and built a public social media that is truly usable by everyone. Just imagine, for a second, what could social media look like? If it was run not according to the whims of billionaires who want to show us ads and exploit us with algorithms, but by the public, for the public good, how much healthier, more enjoyable, and saner could life online be? I don't know, because we haven't tried it yet, but it's worth asking. And you know what? I have a much better name for it than anything that Elon could come up with. XXX.gov is perfect, because think about it. When people think of XXX, they think of people coming together for the benefit of everyone. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, please head to patreon.com slash adamconover. For 15 bucks a month, your name will go in the credits of every single one of these videos, just like all these wonderful folks here. You can find my tour dates at adamconover.net. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon for the next video.